Today at Lost Villa Farms, we're going to be talking about the genetics of guinea fowl. So one thing about us is that we do specialize in the breeding and marketing of different varieties of guinea fowl. We do market and sell them under the name Farmer's Rabbitry and Hatchery. So when people think of guinea fowl, um, they're going to think of the basic wild color, which is a pearl that we have here today. This here is a pearl hen. Um, but, fun fact, as we're going to learn um, in the next couple of videos, guinea fowl do come in over 30 varieties, globally speaking. And the United States is one of those countries fortunate enough to have one of the most varieties of colors. Um, so if you want to come in close, I'll tell you about her. So here we have a pearl hen. Um, pearls are a fully pearled wild bird. Um, there is two types of pearling, and I will go into more detail in future videos. Um, there's the greater pearl and there's a collared pearl. Uh, this here is a collared pearl, which means if we look at the base of her neck, um, this collar of feathers around her neck don't really have any pearling. They're just kind of a solid purple, dusky brown color. If we look at the rest of the body, we see all these feathers are completely pearled. Um, guinea fowl are very popular um, to use their feathers for decorations um, because of these pearlings. The pearls again are those dots, little tiny dots throughout. You will see bigger dots on the wing feathers as opposed to the body, even as opposed to the top of the, um, on the shoulders. One giveaway besides the pearls throughout the entire body, that this is a fully pearled bird, is again that neck, um, neck skin. So in my opinion, neck skin is one of the most reliable ways, um, especially on the, some of the trickier colors, to tell if a bird is fully pearled or semi-pearled, which is the next color we'll talk about. So fully pearled birds are gonna have that black, dark neck skin. When I say neck skin, I do again mean the actual skin, the stripe right here. I don't mean these hair-like feathers. Um, so again, fully pearl birds, dark neck skin, and we'll talk about semi-pearl birds next. Here we have a rural purple cock. Um, a rural purple is a wild, semi-pearled, non-attenuate bird. Um, it's known for having very deep purple to almost black color. If you come in close, I can tell you more about it. But there's two key um, giveaways that this is a semi-pearled bird. The first and honestly the most reliable is going to be its neck skin. Um, it's helpful especially when we get to those attenuates which we'll talk about here in a second. So all semi-pearled birds will have a dilute neck skin. So if you look here on the neck, this skin color right here, the stripe, is a weak almost blue color instead of it being black. And we're talking about the skin, not those feathery hairs. The other day giveaway is we actually look at its feathers, we can see pearling, quite a bit of it throughout the feathers, as well as the few without the flanks. The flanks almost always have more pearling than you're going to see on the, on the wing feathers. Um, and if you notice, the pearling is not completely covering up the feather, it just has a couple, couple of pearls throughout, which makes it a semi-pearled bird. And again, just like any bird, they do fade. So the flanks are going to be the true good color, you want it to be almost black. Um, they do start to fade and turn more of a dusky purple um, in the sun, especially um, poor quality birds will be that color everywhere throughout the entire year. Um, but when they molt, they should be a almost black. So what we have here is a slate cock. A slate is a wild color, attenuate, fully pearled. Um, if you come in close, I'll kind of give you some details about the color. So we can know it's a fully pearled bird despite not having any pearls on it, if you look at its neck color, you can see it's a dark, strong black color. All fully pearled birds, regardless of the color, is gonna have a dark neck color, as opposed to semi-pearls, like we talked about already, that have a dilute neck color. So that's one giveaway. Its next giveaway, if we look at its flanks, it shows its true color, which is kind of a slate gray color. Um, just like any other color, they do fade in the sun, and they will fade to this kind of tan, um, to gray color on top. What's also unique about fully pearled attenuates, they get is what's called a pearl bleed occasionally. Pearl bleeds or they show their fully pearled genetics on half a feather, but they show the attenuate uh, genetics on the other half of the feather. So this feather right here is what we call a pearl bleed. And that is a slate. Here we have a violet cock. A violet is a wild type uh, attenuate and semi-pearled bird. So this is going to be a combination of both the recessive semi-pearl and the recessive attenuate gene. If you come in close, I can tell you more about him. So violets are known to be a very rich purple color. Again, if we look at those flanks, 
You really want them to be this rich purple that you see right here throughout the entire body. Um, just like any color they do fade and they fade to that dusky purple, much like the royal purple. Um, and I do suspect this guy might have a bit of cedar wing influence. Um, in a future video, I will talk a bit about what cedar wing is, but a good true violet should be this rich purple you see here throughout its entire body. If you come up to its neck, um, one of the things that gives away as a semi-pearl is the fact that its neck skin is a dilute color. Again, we're looking at here, it's that weak kind of blue color. It's not very strong. It's not black like you would see on such as a slate or a pearl. The other thing that makes it um, a semi-pearl pentinuate is we see it has no pearling whatsoever. And unlike a slate, which is a fully pearled attenuate, you will not really find any uh, pearl bleeds on the semi-pearled attenuates. Um, so if we look throughout, we don't see any of those kind of half pearled, half attenuate feathers like we did in the slate. Um, so those, those are the two things you look for when you're trying to figure out, is this a semi-pearled bird? Um, is it a attenuate bird? Or is it a semi-pearled attenuate bird? So you look at the next skin, it's a dilute. Tells us, well, it's obviously gonna be semi-pearled but it can't be a non-attenuate because it doesn't have the pearling throughout its body or in its flanks like we see with the royal purple. And that is a violet. Here I have what I refer to as the wild group. On left is the fully pearled non-attenuate collared pearl. Next up is the semi-pearled non-attenuate royal purple. Beside him is the fully pearled attenuate slate. And then after that, we have violet, which is the semi-pearled attenuate. Now, looking at these birds, you can see a distinct difference, both on color and shade of color, as well as the pearling. It's also very um, important to notice the neck skin of these birds. As I mentioned before, the fully pearled pearl and slate have a dark neck skin, while the semi-pearled birds of royal purple and violet have that dilute neck skin. So here we have the four colors interacting next to each other as a, for body shots. Um, again, we got that royal purple on the front. Right behind him is, to the right of him, is the violet. In the corner here is the pearl female. And in the very back is that slate. If you listen, if you can hear the hen making her call. Um, I will go over a later video of how to sex skinny fowl. The call is the most accurate way. I always advise people to memorize what the voice uh, of a female sounds like, but also what she looks like when she makes that call. Here we have a graphic displaying the wild group as adults and keats. In the top left corner, we have a adult pearl and a pearl keat. The genotype for a pearl is the dominant fully pearled, aka collared pearl, non-lavender, non-dun, non-attenuate, wild type, not white. If you look at the keat closely, you can see distinct striping down its head and back with no other white. This is the most dominant variety and will be the most common that you find throughout the globe. Since most of the genetics in guinea fowl are recessive, pearl is often the result when you cross colors. In the bottom left is the royal purple adult with the royal purple keat. Royal purple is a result of the homozygous recessive semi-pearl alleles being displayed over a pearl. If you look at the keat, you can see that the head stripes and back stripes that we saw on the pearl are now much thinner and more squiggly. You can also notice the white on the shoulders that go all the way up the shoulders, not just halfway up the wing. This does indicate the bird is a semi-pearled. It does not necessarily mean that the bird is also pied. All semi-pearled will have the white up to the shoulders of the wings, regardless if it is pied or not. You have to wait until about 10 days of age when the wing feathers start to come in to see if any of the primary or secondary feathers are coming in white to determine if any semi-pearleds are pied. In the top right, we see a slate adult with a slate keat. Slate is also going to be that fully pearled genotype. However, we now have the introduction of the homozygous allele attenuate. Attenuate strips most of the pearling off 
and really reveals that base color of the bird. If you look at the keet, you will notice it is now a rusty red color. Usually the head will also be a slightly darker brown color. Again, much like the pearl, there won't be any white on this bird unless it is going to be a variation of pied. In the bottom right, we see a violet adult with a violet keet. Violet is going to be the introduction of both the recessives we just previously mentioned. That is going to be the semi-pearled recessive and the attenuate recessive, which completely strips the pearling away to reveal a very rich, deep color. Much like the royal purple keet, if you look at the keet of a violet, you will also see it has white going all the way up to its shoulder. We hope you have enjoyed this part one of the guinea fowl genetics. If you did, be sure to follow and subscribe and watch for part two where we discuss the blue aka lavender group. Be sure to check out the introduction video if you're confused by any of the terminology and need a quick rundown of some very basic genetics. Be sure to leave any questions or comments below. Until next time, on the farm.